good morning everyone how is everyone doing good thank you thanks for attending this session today and i know you have many options to attend but thanks for coming here today i am gopi ramamurthy and this tesa mukhavelli yeah good <laughs> so this topic is really interesting one uh, i like to set a thought leadership how uh, it's going to impact the cyber security ecosystem and we'll also go into some of the technical details little bit about myself so i started my uh, security career 15 years back i started at data center i used to buy servers rack it up cable subnet configure everything and then install the software and then install security monitoring software so I learned all that in fintech for nine years, and then I also worked in healthcare for five years. At present, I am head of security at Symmetry Systems. Teza, would you like to? Hi, I'm, I'm Teza Mukhavelli. As I mentioned earlier, I'm the uh, chief security officer at, uh, at ChargePoint. We are one of the largest EV charging infrastructure companies. If you have an electric vehicle, we provide the whole ecosystem for that. Uh, prior, prior to ChargePoint, uh, I was at Facebook on some of their crypto initiatives, and uh, back in the day, with a long time at PayPal. Uh, that's my background. And uh, before we start, uh, thank you. It's a Thursday morning. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of late night parties at RSA. So thank you for showing up, and thank you RSA for inviting. So disclaimer: uh, it's a standard one. Also, it's not. Uh, it's not the representation of our employers so the agenda we have four parts we'll first look at how the cyber security ecosystem and then we'll give a took a we'll take a quick glimpse on the ai features that would help cyber security and the third section we'll go into the main the discussion about this session okay so how many of you work in security operations good thank you and how many of you work in core ai development good so i see more security op operations and less less audience in the ai core development so this is about uh, this session is about more more on the cyber security and uh, privacy uh, ecosystem gopi if i may for yes. a quick second See, the the topic is is kind of controversial because we are we are putting a uh, stake around what do we what do we expect the industry to look like uh, and and 45 minutes is way too short to do something like that so we, but what we are hoping is uh, as an output you it it promotes you to have a lot of discussions whether publicly or with your colleagues on oh this was the view and you'll see it very soon uh, but that's that's the ultimate objective is to drive those conversations uh, from our, what we see but end of the day what you see in your world thank so. you <laughs> okay let's take a let's take a look at uh, ecosystem that uh, in our in our security infrastructure so last 3 to 5 years there's been heavy heavy digital transformation so most of the systems are moving we you are having heavy uh, moving to cloud and digital transformation occurring at higher speed and uh, if you are managing the uh, security operations your products could be you will have maybe 10 products or 20 or 30 products in your security monitoring system to monitor your enterprise security and uh, some of your um, if you are working in fintech or dod you'll have more more uh, complex security monitoring system i'll, I'll make it little bit simplify for you so wherever we go as a security uh, security professional uh, we can we can put them in five or six different buckets to to focus right first one is corporate your end user devices and all the all the uh, devices used by end user second one is the cloud infra the infrastructure that we are using to host our applications third one is uh, the applications we develop or use and the fourth one is data and the fifth one is the third parties that we in interact with so i try to simplify this for this conversation down the line so have this in mind and we will reuse this slide some down the line 
Okay. Okay. That's yeah. Sure. So when we when we think about AI as a feature today, you know, um, you all probably are getting bombarded as you walk through the floor. Um, where where does the cybersecurity head? So what we've done is when when you look at a product and you think about where can AI help you because you hear AI, what we've tried is, tried is we've tried to distill what is it that you should look at, what are those key parameters that help you, should I, yeah, yeah. So uh, primarily it's about where, if you look at it, it historically there has been RPAs, there have been other ways of solving some of the mundane manual tasks, but what you're expecting at AI uh, to help you is to, you know, com through compute that's available to kind of make you leap forward. Not just purely from automating some of your daily tasks as a, as a cybersecurity practitioner, but also bring in a lot of these additional contexts, whether they're publicly available, whether it's a threat index, whether, whether it's, um, it's a historical, uh, you know, cybersecurity vulnerability or some kind of incident that your organization has seen. Getting all these contexts together is what AI truly helps you. So, so what we've done is um, a lot of times we look at a tool and we see, okay, what, how do we say this is going to truly give me a lift in my organization? So these, these, are, these are eight. You, you could come up with a list of 20 or 50, right? But if, if you're truly looking at some of the tools that are out there, these, these are probably your top eight that you should always consider. The first one being the complexity. You know, something, something that truly AI promises or some of the gen, gen AI aspects that are, out, that are out there provide you is trying to simplify the complexity. You know, going back to the, to the security view that you had, the, the complexity of that is, is important. The second one is, of course, the decision making. And this is where it kind of like um, uh, converges well with the security training aspect. The reason I say that is you have, you, you know cybersecurity has a massive, uh, you know, problem with hiring new people, getting new people to come in. There's a burnout that happens in different teams. So as much of the decision making that you can kind of like provide your system to do, the LLM models are trained to do it, that helps you simplify some of the decision, decision make, making aspects. And as you go further down, um, um, the support across different languages, if you see, there is there's definitely an increase in a lot of um, phishing and some of the newer deep fake that you see, there's a massive multi-language aspect to it. And um, as, you, as you look at the next 12 to 18 months, some of the key aspects is can your tools provide this multi-language support uh, across different regions? So that, that's a critical aspect as well. Uh, how do you measure it? Probability of human errors is, is another thing. You have to always benchmark it against an analyst spending eight hours to solve something versus an AI tool spitting something in like 40 minutes. Um, but, but what is the probability of something like that? How do you baseline it? That, that becomes critically important. Good. Thank you, Teza. So this is the core part of the presentation. To, to collect uh, the, <clears throat> to collect uh, the content for this presentation, uh, we looked at from four different angles. So, first one, uh, interestingly, we checked with AI, what AI thinks about this particular topic. <laughs> we created the prompt, we ran through multiple prompt, and want, we wanted to bring, share with you what AI thinks. The second one, uh, we put together from our collective 30-year experience, what we worked through technically building the system from the ground up, for security, for healthcare, as well as FinTech, for data centers, as well as cloud. We have to set it up a lot of things manually and do right, create, right scripts to feed and filter it out. And uh, so we put together our thoughts. The next one is, we also ran the survey in February and March, and uh, we, touch, we sent it out a little over 100 and 120 cybersecurity leaders we got around 70 responses. We have summarized this, that as well. To, to make it, like, look at from what we think, what you think. The last one is, as part of the, uh, the conference, we talked to many attendees as well. We collected some of their feedback as well, what they think about this topic, and we'd like to share that with you.
first uh, we created the same prompt next one please so this is the prompt because if said slight variation in the prompt a yeah, would differently answer so we kept the same prompt we ran the same prompt against multiple ai next one please so we check with op open ai it talked about it will revolve <coughs> it will uh, it will not eliminate but it will enhance the cyber security platform so it gives you a lengthy answer it gives you some of the ai gave me one page answer some of the ai gave me two page answers and uh, some of them well formatted like how it could help like automation all that it it did but summary it said it will not eliminate the product but it will enhance the uh, products <coughs> we ran through a microsoft platform and uh, it it said the same thing it will revolu revolutionize the cyber security ecosystem next one please okay so perplexity gave a little bit different answer it said it could eliminate some of the uh, tra uh, tracking uh, reporting and and a consolidation product could be eliminated by 2030 so this the response from perplexity we check with few more uh, ais and uh, those two talked about either uh, enhance or ev ev revolutionize the product system yeah so gemini said the same thing but this interestingly if you check run the prompt today and if you run the prompt tomorrow or a week later you could see different responses because llm learning right and uh, that's what we saw with gemini as well so we ran i reran the prompt after a day and uh, next one please yeah so we got the different answer this time little bit about how it could eliminate some of the um, some of the product that does automating uh, automating the task and uh, what what it uh, do in the threat detection so it's refining so as we talk now what we are going to see today uh, it could change in 12 months 18 months more next one okay so now we are going to share with what we think through and could yeah. we go through sure so so the the first part that you saw what what ai thinks if you see the way we broke down our task says we didn't want to bias each other with our point of view so some those those four different uh, buckets that you saw uh, gopi worked on a few of those and uh, we didn't share information until a while so that we didn't want to bias ourselves into what our point of view was so this is this is what we looked at from what we think uh, from a collective experience of uh, you know 30 40 years as to where we, where do we see a massive opportunity and, and something to clarify here is the slide looks a bit um, you know um, everything on the top it's going down everything in the bottom uh, is going um, you know so if you if you read the right it's it's going up if you read the left it's going down so if you think things like workflow automation correlation automated pen testing those are all the things that get elevated with um, with the new ai with the new ai features that are in the in different products that are available you know um, uh, some of the interesting things is today you um, you buy an endpoint for three hundred dollars, and you buy agents for fifteen hundred dollars to secure it, right? So um, there's the the reason for that is there's a massive amount of you know uh, guarding the whole perimeter. So endpoint protection is something that we see as a as a massive improvement. Then uh, things that we look at, uh, which will get more and more uh, sophisticated with AI coming into place, things like behavior monitoring. Definitely, there's a massive. Already, we see a lot in some of some of the same SOC solutions that are out there, but this is this is a big piece that will get uh, further improved. Uh, reporting is another pl place where we'll see massive improvements. Um, aggregation, of course, uh, you all know it. When you when you look when you want to see the historical context of of what happened, um, how far is an exploitability in your environment? You want to tie it together. You can bring it more uh, effectively with with the new Gen AI and some of the AI components that are in place. Um, and, and then a lot of this is, again, uh, 
if you see tied together with identities, you know, when you talk about identities, you have you have user as an identity and machine as an identity. You know, bringing these closer and closer together is where uh, we see we see a massive uh, lift in terms of using AI as well. Yeah. Okay. So we're going back to this diagram. So further slides would use this diagram. So say if you are managing huge enterprise or, or moderate uh, enterprise, so you'll have corporate end, uh, end, endpoint protection management. Uh, so how to, how to manage the laptops, uh, any user devices you offer to them, either mobile phone or whatever. The second one is you may be using a couple of clouds, one to two cloud uh, as part of your, your strategy um, to run to use the computing resources, or you may have your own uh, data, data centers, but you would probably uh, would have standardized based on last five to 10 years of uh, commodity uh, server. The third one is uh, application. So you may be working in retail or banking or DOD or education or justice department. So you'll have your applications developed, hosted, either in your data center or on cloud. Uh, the, the fourth pillar here is data. So data is from your corporate data, your customer data, and uh, um, any your IP data, everything. The last, last section here is third parties. So now with the cloud and SaaS, every, every company almost using multiple third parties, at least 40 and up per for your finance, for your HR, for your security monitoring, for your development, and so on. So, and then once you have it, you'll have some frameworks, CS, top 18 control or NIST, and then you'll have ISO, PCI, whatever you need to do with that. Now, take that five thing, and then see which one will have, we have to redo with AI development to do the security monitoring, and which some of the products could get eliminated or consolidated. So we're looking at corporate security. What we have seen in three to five years is we have eliminated a lot of facilities. We have eliminated printers, scanners, so many other machines. Most of our work resources are kind of standardized with Windows laptop or Mac laptop and some of the, some of the BOD, again, which falls into those categories and some of the mobile phones. With the digital transformation, with pandemic hitting, our, our corporate side traffic have been slightly standardized, number one. Our coverage monitoring went up exponentially. Previously, there may be a gap in coverage of monitoring end user devices, but with everybody l working remote, we try to make sure they come through uh, known doors, not multiple doors. We also try to monitor all the traffic to ensure there's no bad actor coming through because of all the digital transformation happened. So what I'm seeing here uh, in corporate security, when I started, when I was installing this software, we used to have multiple monitoring software on the laptop uh, to meet security control as well as compliance control. But nowadays I see one or two endpoint protection software. So it's kind of a little bit consolidating. The second thing is with LLM, <coughs> it could be rewritten with the LLM architecture to monitor end user devices. And only missing piece there is the threat intel. So threat intel have to be constantly collected by a product vendor or a, or a information ISACs or somebody to ensure our corporate devices are protected. So that's a, that's a constant new piece coming in, but writing, protecting underlying corporate security devices, I have seen some consolidation. Yeah. The next one is the cloud. So when I started working in security, I used to go to data center, connect the, I mean, rack the servers, do coding, do, put it in the subnet, configure it, and do a lot more work. Also the log from multiple server, multiple application and network layer, some of them were not in common event format. So I had to read, I had to write the code 
to convert them to common event format feed to sim. Once it goes to sim, also the out of box rules in the sim were very, very less when I started. So I have to write rules in sim as well. So that's one thing. Second thing was there were multiple data centers and I have to collect all the logs. Number one for centralized logging and monitoring. Number two for sim. So I have to set a proxy and I have to make sure the proxy is not failing to feed the log from the data centers to the where I have SIM and centralized monitoring, yes. So what I mean <coughs> SIM is SIM alone is not one, one product, but on top of SIM, we also wrote, I was in FinTech, we also wrote bunch of scripts which will go through the log and then give me the alerts. Because in the FinTech, once money is gone, money is gone. So I cannot tell my boss I did these 20 things. If we lose money, if there's a fraud, we lose credibility. So we have to have product as well as we have to have custom scripts to enhance the security posture management. What happened in last three to five years or 10 years is the cloud has given me standard log format. Cloud, most of my devices moved to cloud and they have given me standard log format so a lot of my, all my manual work are configuring, setting it up, because all the, all the basic work have been eliminated and it has become standard format. With LLM coming in, AI coming in right time, they can take it and then consolidate this into less products and they can re-architecture to have better monitoring even more in this digital world. That's what I have been seeing. The third piece here is third party security. So what I have seen and I've been doing is the vendor reviews are becoming more and more automated. So if you're, you're picking up vendors, you have vendors that we know their endpoints. You, we know their, their SOC 2 or whatever the certificate they have. And uh, we, can, we can automate that with uh, AI. The missing piece with the third party that is still slightly complicated to do the monitoring is the API connectivity, any interfaces we have. They can come through uh, SNS, they can come through SQS, they can come through webhook, they can come through API interface, they can come through multiple interfaces, or they can come through just the access key. So that piece still it's still complex that could be elevated by AI. The upper two pieces, the application and data. Every application, even though a lot of consolidation going on, still every application is slightly different because retail application is slightly different from FinTech application. The DOD, education, other applications are still different, technology application or even simple service now kind of application is still different. So the FinTech application, for example, is combined with real-time fraud monitoring. It's not only your money movement, it's when you're moving like say $5,000, it's, it's not only about the money moving, it's about checking whether it's you or, or somebody else. For example, in, in retirement, uh, the Vanguard and Fidelity, right? They also check the typing speed, if it is a 70 year old typing or 25 year old typing. So it's, it's very, the applications are different from each industry. Healthcare applications are slightly different. So AI would benefit, provide benefit to elevate the application security across. The last piece here is data security. So no matter however we protect, the bad actors are very, very interested in taking your data to convert into money or host, make you hostage, right? So they'll be always, always in attack on data. No matter how much standardization we do, no matter how much security we need add, they'll be always, always attack on data. And AI could, could help the data security products to elevate the, the posture, that one. Thank you. So now we saw 
in the previous slide we saw each domain. We took a quick look at in each domain how AI could uh, uh, consolidate some of the products or elevate the products. This one, uh, we, we want to throw some sample product. Again, this is not the complete list. This is giving you an idea to, to think through what products you have now, what products you want to buy in 2025 or 2026, what products you want to replace with AI and LLM based products, right? Let's look at the bottom ones. Data aggregation, the power of AI is it could summarize, it could say this particular config was changed, this is a ticket, this is approved, so this is a approved change. So you could, you could have that log, centralized log, plus you could have the intelligence of correlating the changes up to the approval. So that's already happening. If you have listened to Caleb on Monday, or B sites, he gave an even example what's, what's happening right now in the data aggregation and helping you through, go through a lot of logs up to the approval or change management. Second one is security training. So what it means is based on user behavior, somebody clicking on phishing link or somebody going to wrong website or somebody uploading an yeah, unapproved file based on user behavior, it can throw training specific to the user and not to annoy all the employees. So that's already happening. Uh, there are software companies which did that. And um, so we are going to see more and more completely rewritten based on the AI to reduce all this uh, task. The next one is uh, anomaly detection. So uh, I gave an example, like whether it's a 25-year-old typing or 70-year-old typing, or you are typing from here or away from ho your home. So we had a rudimentary way of anomaly detection for fa past 15 years. But it's going to change with the AI LLM model. It's going to quickly identify more and more anomalies and help you to do better job either for awareness or for security or for anything related to even development. The AI is going to help us in huge amount of anomaly detection. The two more pieces here is vendor review. Uh, I touched upon it. So based on your vendor overall endpoint security and, and their complaints, to some extent, it will help. Second, you could, you could answer with RFP, and uh, you, could, you, could, you probably will have huge amount of AI LLM uh, help in completing your, uh, the costiness. And email security. So, one thing I like to touch upon email security is uh, BEC, Business Email Compromise. So it is many of the BEC products are heavily written on natural language understanding. So it can know whether uh, it, it, it knows the specific content, tokens like Argent, Money, Bank of Georgia, not in Atlanta, but Bank of Georgia somewhere. So it knows the tokens and context and it already Many, some of the companies have built completely the BEC prevention based on uh, NLU. And uh, so many, the other companies are rewriting the code based on AI to take care of BEC. So this on the consolidation or replacement part. And the upper one is on the elevation part. So we talked about uh, SOAR. I used to have, I used to write a lot of playbooks in my uh, cloud security. Uh, we need to see based on this alert, send it to pager duty or Jira, or just ignore the alert or do this change. So we used to write playbooks with uh, A and LLMs, uh, those can be automated. In the pen testing, um, pen testing is check, do the recon, 
and see which doors can be entered, what are the vulnerabilities and how you can enter and uh, how we can laterally navigate. So if you look at the pen test, it's about check 50 things, do 50 uh, different steps in the order. All that we can train LLMs, they can do and help us. Still, why I put it in the maturity model is, pen test is, is complicated because our applications are different, our data locations are different. So, and the, the, the second piece, the pen test, pen test space is their time is only less. Sometimes they, they get one to two weeks to test a product and sometimes they have to jump from, whether it's a internal pen testers or external pen testers, they have to jump from one week, one product to another product. So they don't have much time, but AI LLM can help them to consolidate those steps and then help to do the better pen testing. Y like to add something? Yeah, to, uh, from a pen testing standpoint, you. You definitely run scanners today. You definitely have some kind of manual testing, uh, which happens periodically. If you can afford it, you probably do it more more frequently. But when you bring in a third party pen tester, you, usually they take a lot of time um, understanding the context. And the context is what you can start providing your, uh, your AI pen tester is. It starts to understand not just the internal infra context, but also how users are interacting with you. Uh, which is which is uh, a long duration of that pen test that uh, that they try to find. So, and it, it can be more continuous as well. So, yeah. thank you. So this is not the comprehensive list. This is to give you an idea. As you manage your security operations, you can think through what products I am using and what my what my requirements are, and then think through what's going to change in my portfolio, security portfolio down the line. Yeah. So moving on to the, the third third uh, section that you saw there, the first one was we asked uh, most of the prompt engines, the second one was our thoughts there, and the third one is going to the community. So uh, as Gopi mentioned, we reached out to a lot, uh, uh, you know, mostly uh, people that we've worked with, uh, fellow leaders that we've interacted with over our past, and um, we, got, we got some interesting data. Because as, as we were putting these these slides together, our, um, our big objective was, does this resonate? You know, these different points of view, does this resonate? And um, we, we kept it simple. We wanted to keep it like four questions to our, to our fellow security leaders. And the first one was, do you, do you use AI today? Because there, there's a massive, uh, you know, misinterpretation as well. You could, you could see something like an ML engine which runs and conclude that it's an AI. Uh, and and that could be the reason that a lot of lot of uh, my my fellow peers think that yes they use AI, but a good fifty percent plus have said yes, there is an AI, and and most of the folks who have said they are still on the fence, are in industries which are heavily regulated, um, healthcare being one of those was uh, was one of those industries where we saw okay they they're still in the fence they're waiting for some guidance, they're talking to their boards to understand, you know, uh, how they should tread on some of this. The next one was, where do you plan to use AI, right? Um, and obviously some of the, some of the, you know, low hanging areas are operations, uh, where, you know, there's already a lot of data, there's a lot of uh, manual intensive uh, daily routines that are involved. So that's obviously an area where there's, there's a lot of interest. The, uh, which was 31%. Then we went into GRC. GRC in this case includes your vendor reviews. While your threat around vendors is definitely going up from a fourth and fifth party standpoint, you, you have more uh, automation capabilities today to understand what is the vendor posture rather than doing this um, 70 pages of Excel with your, with your vendors on probably once a year or once in a couple of years, you can make it more automated. Uh, that is definitely a lot of interest around that. Um, then you get into some of the engineering work. Uh, what that means is understanding some of your core infrastructure components, whether it comes to your, your uh, infrastructure as a code, um, the code that you're deploying into there, your Kubernetes stack, if you're into that, 
things like that. How, how can we use more automation in, in some of those deployments, uh, redeployments, patching of those, you know, those kind of uh, uh, capabilities that are there. And finally, uh, the, the security bots. What, uh, what we mean by that is, as a security, you're kind of in horizontal to your whole organization. How do you, how do you reduce the, the load where they come to your team, they ask you a bunch of questions, you are now like put them onto this queue and you try to figure it out. But uh, the security bots here help, help you get really close where at least 80% of the repeated questions that come in from your business and different functions, you can have the bot handle it. And a lot of that has already uh, come up, but of course it is, it is learning, it is training itself, but there's definitely a lot of interest around, around that piece as well. Um, the, the next piece was what are the main threats of AI, right? Um, some, of the, some of the biggest concerns that we have in the industry. Um, a, a lot of pieces are around botnets and uh, your denial of service attacks. The next piece was around um, data exfiltration. So, but if you see a big piece here that I want to call out is identity compromise. This was, and, and what, 74 um, CISOs or heads of security have responded to this. And a lot of them have felt that identity compromise is a big piece that they're worried about. This is where, you know, the earlier point around where your user identities and machine identities kind of like get closer and closer to, to each other. How do, you, how do you manage those? How do you think about those compromises? That was, that was definitely uh, a key area. And, and the fourth question was, Um, we, we wanted to be a bit, uh, bit funny, right? Where do you plan to spend time? Because the floor is kind of like getting split in these directions where are you, are you thinking about security for AI, which is, you know, there's a lot of interest. That is how, as a practitioner in my company, that's how I'm introducing a lot of AI is I'm looking at tools, the enterprise tools that are AI capable and how do we introduce security as part of that? Um, then, of course, uh, it's AI for security. That's definitely the next piece there. And um, finally, security for AI, right? Uh, so, uh, so those were the three big buckets uh, that we saw uh, from, our, from our community. Yeah, this one as well. Uh, we asked a similar question from them as well. Like, what, what do they think would be eliminated by AI? Um, and, and if you see, it's, it's kind of like broken into some of the top five categories are pretty interesting where uh, U UBA, of course, user behavior, security training, the security training which goes to a users like once a year, 45 minutes, they probably watch Netflix and then do this. Um, how, do you, how do you make it more in line, more seamless, more behavior based? You know, there's a lot of interest around that. When I refuse, uh, we've talked enough, and of course the the sims or capabilities, the response capabilities that you have. Right. So we presented them with more options like WAF and CASB, but the CISOs they they are smart. They picked up the the common theme that can uh, resonate with AI. That's where uh, this came up. Uh, the top. Uh, high chances of uh, replacement or elimination uh, products from the CISOs. Okay. <coughs> so this is the fourth part of the, uh, the sources for the presentation. So we talked through multiple attendees in the conference. What three thing I heard repeatedly is um, it can aggregate very well, summarize very, very well. So that's one, one theme I heard, uh, AI. So any product that just do the dashboard or low level risk assessment or summary that can be fully uh, written with the LLM and AI and it can, uh, it can replace existing product. That's number one. Second thing is the automation. Automation is, uh, I don't have to write many playbooks. I can teach them through either supervised learning or reinforced learning, and then I can make that playbook to build it as I do something, and my LLM can listen to me and start building the playbook, and I can reduce, I don't have to write 
some of the companies I heard, they have more than 200 playbooks, and may, most of them were built over the time. LLM can do that uh, with the automation. The third piece is processing huge volume of data, which we struggle in two things, right? With the SIM, I always count at how much gig I'm going to, my, my worry is, how much I gig I have to pay rather than how much dollar, how much alerts I can effectively resolve. So my, my SIM vendors would look at whether it's SIM or in my data center. I'm worried about my storage equally as compared to my alerts as well. But with the AALLM, I've seen some vendors, they are smart filtering the number of the logs coming to SIM and then from there they are building it. So that's the third piece I heard from the attendees. I have seen demos from the expo floor as well. You want to add? Oh, that's that's uh, great, yeah. Okay, so it's, it's, it's going to have, the AA going to have huge impact and uh, this, this session is just to open your minds, be ready to see the change and uh, some of the slides you may not agree or you may agree. Some of the slides we couldn't list all the products that we could list, but it could definitely give you an idea where, um, what changes uh, you need to be open in 12 to 18 months. And um, so look at your, your risk, security risk, look at your current vendor list, look at your overall posture, and take an uh, inventory of what you have. And in the next, uh, within three to six months, see what you need to change. Most of us will be done our budget around, for next year, around October. So between now and October, go and prepare your AI-based security ecosystem. And uh, talk, to, talk to vendors, learn, learn what's going on and also see how the prompt, right now some of the prompt, the answers are not coming well, but down the line, the prompt can be improved, the response for the prompt. Number two, see how you need to prompt it to get better response as well from the products that's coming up. So be open to change, be learning, uh, keep learning, and uh, plan your next three to six months. Like yeah, you, if if you are you are a homegrown security program, then you you have a you have a different kind of a challenge where you have to think about what's going to be your basic fabric from moving forward. Uh, but if you if you are looking at um, if you are if you have a lot of um, third parties that build up your security program like ours, we definitely want to evaluate them, uh, see the overlaps, who's moving forward. Everybody uses the AI uh, term. It's the it's definitely there, but you have to like truly evaluate and see if they can deliver what uh, you want. Thank you. Uh, we have a few minutes for questions. I think five minutes for questions. Yeah. So if you have any questions, please come to the mic and uh, we could answer them. Otherwise, uh, let's get connected. Let's continue the conversation and uh, whatever we are telling today could change a lot in 12 to 18 months. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.